Okay, hey everyone. One of the first things that we work on when we get into our uh, our two on two digit and three on two digit uh, multiplication unit, one of the first things we do is extended math facts, and it kind of gives us a foundation of how numbers work. I know when I learned as a kid, there wasn't a lot of how these things work. It was more carry the one. Why was I carrying the one? I had no idea. I just carried the one. So the first couple of lessons are all about understanding how multiplication works before we start giving them the rote algorithm, just the basic skill. At least they'll understand why they're doing that instead of how I did it and I just did it. So for an extended math fact, first things first, they have to know their math facts. And I tell the kids when they're moving up from third grade, when I see them in the hallway, keep working on those math facts. Get them down, get them down, get them down. We don't want you doing trying to do 96 times 54 if you don't want, know what 9 times 6 is. You're making the task way more difficult than it has to be. So we have to memorize those math facts. Once we have those math facts memorized and they're automatic, we can start working with extended math facts. So let's say we do a number like 8 times 7. Obviously 8 times 7 is 56. An extended math fact would be when we take this math fact and we extend one of the numbers, which is then going to extend our answer. So let's say we go 8 times 70. Well, what we look at is we find the math fact. So here's the math fact, 8 times 7, there's our 56, and then all we do is we kind of think about it like a teeter-totter. We've got to put some balance to it, so the balance is I have a 0 right here, I need to put a 0 over here. So 8 times 70 would be 560. If you flip-flop it the other way, let's say we did 80 times 7. Same thing's going to happen. Where's my math fact? 8 times 7 is 56. And then there's that teeter-totter. Find that balance. They've got 1, 0 on this side of the equal sign. We need to put 1, 0 on this side of the equal sign. Okay? Let's extend it a little bit further. We'll use the same math fact. But now let's add a couple more zeros onto it. Let's go... 800 times 70 equals. And at the beginning of the school year, this problem would be pretty overwhelming just looking at it, but if they just establish that it's just 8 times 7, they're going to go 8 times 7 is 56, and then they add on 1, 2, 3 zeros to it. 1, 2, 3 zeros. 1, 2, 3, comma. So that's how you extend a math fact. One trick that I want to show you to make sure that your students don't make this mistake at home would be when we're using, let's say, 5 times 2. Because 5 times 2 is 10, and now we get a little bit tricky because we already have zeros in the problem. So what I tell kids to do is to box that answer. 5 times 2 is 10. That way, when I get down here, and let's say I'm doing 50 times 20, I still do the math fact, 5 times 2 is 10, but now I'm going to box that, because that 0 is not a 0 we're adding on, that 0 is part of the actual answer. Now we're going to add on 1, 2 zeros, 1, 2, our answer is 1,000. So that is the beginning of extended math fact. You can take any of the math facts off the multiplication table and just start adding zeros and see if your kids can do that teeter-totter and make it balanced. If I have two zeros here, I add two here. And that's how it works.